to ethics, to the heart of the question here. You're going to face ethics issues from the first week you're on the job. And, and, and so we've got to get students thinking about how to think about those issues. And I'm not very big on prescribing solutions that here's the ethics handbook and here are the answers, but just to think critically uh, about ethical issues. And let me just give one example from the intelligence community in my time in government. The hardest thing in the world of is, is intelligence is telling really powerful people something they don't want to hear. My boss uh, in the Congress, Lee Hamilton, who was chairman of the Intelligence Committee, framed it this way. Presidents usually get the intelligence they want. And so the real struggle uh, is to, um, to uh, speak truthfully about the facts as best you know them, and that's really, really hard to do at senior levels. Uh, and case in point, I won't belabor it, but uh, the Iraq war decision. I was in government at the time. It was clear that President Bush and his administration wanted to go to war in Iraq. It was clear that the most important argument was that Iraq was developing a nuclear capability. And the facts didn't lend themselves to make that case, as we learned later. But the argument at the time, and forgive my brief discussion of technicalities, concerned aluminum tubes. And were they for centrifuges and making nuclear stuff, or were they for artillery? Well, the experts in Britain and the experts in the energy department said, you, you can't use these for centrifuges. They'll blow up. Everyone else in the community said, well, Mr. President, we're sure that the Iraqis are developing them for nuclear weapons. I was at the Department of State at the time uh, in the Bureau of Intelligence and Research. And the Bureau resisted that uh, judgment and said, these aren't for nuclear applications. Um, but the Bureau lost the debate, and uh, that uh, point of difference was relegated to a footnote. What do you know about footnotes? Nobody reads footnotes. <laughs> and they did not appear in the executive summary. And so this important point of dissent was lost. And so just to finish moving forward to the time when I became chairman of the National Intelligence Council, I said we will never have footnotes again relating to substance. Yes, cite your sources correctly. But points of substantive difference must appear in the document. And when they're important, they must appear in the executive summary. They must be briefed to policymakers. Because the long and the short of it is the intelligence community only gets hard questions. All those questions have incomplete information because people are trying to hide information from you, governments or others. And so, Smart people will take limited data and give different interpretations. It's really important that policymakers know about dissent. And Jan and others on the panel, and me too, we're going to talk about how hard it is when you're way down the food chain to give that dissenting view and not get your head cut off and not lose your job. Hard to do, but that, that's the challenge. I'll stop. So a footnote to the footnote. Um, I don't know if ever, any of you have ever seen uh, these things called challenge coins. You know, they're started by the military, but now everybody has them. Apparently President Trump has them as well with Kim Jong-un. Um, you know, when you sort of go to a meeting, someone gives you a challenge coin. Well, the Bureau of Intelligence and Research at the State Department has a challenge coin. And it says INR, and there's a footnote at the bottom, uh, which is their sort of uh, passive aggressive way to say they got it right. Uh, when everybody else got it wrong. <laughs>